you know, with all the properties that Disney now owns, I wonder how long before we get a Muppets vs Predator. Anne! Anne! Where Anne? You're one ugly mother. How are you doing guys? Welcome back to Rewind Reviews. Today we're going to be doing a movie from 2022 exclusive to Hulu and Disney Plus and that is Prey. The prequel to 1987's Predator. Prey tells the origin story of the Predator in the world of the Comanche Nation 300 years ago. The film follows Naru, a skilled warrior who fights to protect a tribe against one of the first highly evolved Predators to land on Earth. Written by Patrick Ayson and directed by Dan Trachenberg, the movie stars Amber Midthunder, Dakota Beavers and Dane DeLegro as the Predator. You know, I remember back when they first announced that they were going to be doing like a rebooted Predator franchise underneath the Disney banner. I remember a lot of people being a bit worried about what direction they'd really sort of go in. And honestly, it is it is in safe hands. Honestly, this is more Predator-like than most of the movies that we've had recently. I've only ever seen the original Predator movies, the first and second one, like once. And most of the stuff I really sort of remember about them was just how big and over the top they could be with Arnie and all his army buddies together. But with this one, from the marketing, from everything that we were really seeing of it, it looked like it was going to be a very different movie and it definitely looked like it was going to be stepping back from a lot of the more over the top elements that even like uh, the Predators movie or Shane Black's The Predator embraced. But that isn't a bad thing at all because being a lot more different, a lot more fresher, that works for this movie so well. Starting off with the casting for this movie, I genuinely think that the casting is really good. Like Everybody is really great in each of their roles. The movie mostly kind of focuses more on uh, Naru and the Predator as well as Naru's brother. There are definitely a lot of other characters who do appear through this but most of the focus is on Naru who on her brother as well. We do get to spend like a little bit of time within like the Comanche Nation and it takes place in like the 1700s so it's definitely set within this sort of time period where there's no technology, it's all very isolated and kind of cut off and it's like the perfect sort of setting for this movie. And we do get a really good idea of like the culture of this time period but we don't really get to spend an awful lot of time with it because most of the focus is on the Predator storyline which is kind of what we are here to see and even though the casting is genuinely really good and especially like I'm a mid thunder who's absolutely amazed I, I, the first time I ever saw her was in uh, Legion which is on I think it was Fox uh, she was really good in it I'm really glad that she is starting to get a lot more bigger roles and I'm hoping that this does sort of lead on to her becoming like a really big star in Hollywood because she she definitely does deserve it she is definitely one of the best aspects of this film and because it focuses on her that's kind of the thing that does elevate it quite a bit but there isn't really a lot of development when it comes to not only her character but the brother uh, a lot of the side characters as well. There's all these different characters who are introduced and a lot of them are very two-dimensional only really kind of serve to be like cannon fodder in a way. And I just think that there could have been just a little bit more with them. I mean, the movie is 90 minutes long. I think that personally it is the perfect length for a movie like this, but there is the opportunity for them to just expand it on just a tiny bit more. And because the movie is taking place in the 1700s, it does mean that it has gone like a in a way like a back to basics story of survival. It feels like what the original Predator tried doing, which is, is a simple story where it's quite stripped back and it's mostly focused on just these people just trying to survive against this almost unstoppable opponent. And because of where this movie takes place and where it, when it's set, it does distance it quite enough from the originals because that movie is like a full on action movie. This one does feel a little bit more like a horror. It's very, it's very primal in the way that it operates. It's a very brutal movie, and it's good because it does separate it enough that it does feel like it's its own thing, but it does still feel like it is connected to the same franchise. Because even though I do like that the setting does kind of change with each movie, because the second film took place in a city, uh, the third one kind of went back to the forest setting. I do feel like. The setting and the action does kind of work well for Predators. But when it comes to like the Predator from Shane Black, I think I liked when it sort of went back to what it was originally because like the a lot of the movie sort of takes place within like this little this little city and then it sort of starts sort of going more into like a forest area and it starts kind of feeling a bit more like what the original movies were, but the story just just 
didn't work. I really don't get what it was that they were trying to do with that film because it just doesn't really feel like what a Predator film does. This one really does embrace that and I think that even though, yeah, the over-the-top stuff is very stripped back, I really do like that they have sort of gone back to like this forest setting with a very sort of tense horror tone to it which really works for this franchise. When it comes to the Predator himself I think that this is definitely one of the better ones that they have had. I know some people weren't really on board with the design and that's fair but for me personally I think that the design of him is genuinely great. I think he's really big, I think he's quite threatening and scary. I love how he operates because one of the things that they do is they don't really sort of set him loose on the Comanches straight away. What they are basically doing is because um, he's basically been sent to, to Earth for whatever reasons and what you sort of see him doing is kind of like his hunting sort of escalates with like every single kill that he makes so that his opponents are getting a bit more bigger and a bit more threatening and I like seeing how that sort of progresses until eventually he comes face to face with Naru. He does feel like a genuine threat to Naru because she isn't necessarily somebody who is like really on top of everything. She isn't somebody who has a lot of experience when it comes to like battle like this. And that's something that does kind of get developed over time. And I really do like how they do approach how she is able to not only take on the Predator but potentially could win. Because let's face it, she isn't Arnold Schwarzenegger. I mean, nobody's Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> so... They can't necessarily have her going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Predator in the same way that Arnie did. So what they managed to do is they find a way of having her basically being so much more smarter to try and beat this thing. It does work really well. It does build the tension as well because you see just how quick he can just go through people. So having somebody who is able to be smarter and try and trick this thing it works really 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 well and it does add to the horror element as well because it does bring a lot of the horror elements back into this franchise which it is needed because of just how unstoppable the predator actually is i love how like there are sort of moments that did remind me a lot of the i think it was 2019 invisible man movie where the camera just sort of like lingers on the background and you don't know whether or not the predator is actually there in shot or if he's just gone so i like that there is this real uncertainty around where the predator could actually be and i do like how they approach that and when it comes to like the tension side of things it isn't necessarily just because like the predators around that things feel real tense it's because naru's basically going up against all these different animals as well like wolves and bears and there's so much that's just kind of out to get her and it is genuinely a story of survival against all these different kinds of things including humans there is this real rawness to it it's very brutal it's very graphic and violent one of the sequences which they've kind of shown in the trailer is probably one of the best predator reveals i've actually seen because it's kind of the first time that you really sort of see what it is that the predator looks like but it's not really in the direction that you'd expect it to be because it does involve the bear and I think it's so well handled, it's so gruesome as well but it looks amazing. The action overall is really good, it is very well handled, it's shot nicely, you can see everything, it's well edited. I do kind of question how it is that this movie is like a 15, I don't know if it's actually like officially a 15 or if it's a 16 because that there's a few moments that really do sort of push just how graphic it is. In fairness, like most of the, the most graphic stuff is kind of done off screen, so you don't really see it, but a lot of it is. Even though I did mention it earlier, I do have to reiterate, like the setting for this movie, where it is and the surroundings that they're in, plus the way that like the environment just sort of is used in this film, it really does suit not only this movie, but the Predator franchise as a whole. It does kind of give me the vibe of like a fan film. This does feel like something that fans sat down and decided to make together. It really works. And when I say fan film, I mean it's one of the good ones. It does have that kind of quality to it. The only difference being that it has a mega budget. But honestly, all the love and passion that the creators really do have for the franchise really comes through in this movie. And that's why I keep saying... It feels like a fan film because it comes from that place of fans. Even though the movie is quite practical in the way that it does approach a lot of different things, there are still a few effects that you do utilise throughout the film. And most of it does look pretty good. There's not many elements that 
don't quite work it's used sparingly it's used very well when it comes to like the animals like the wolves the bear they look great they look very realistic there's only like a few moments with a few other creatures that don't quite look great but overall they're fine i like what they do with like the predators like shimmer stealth effect because i think this is probably like, the best looking version that we've ever got and do definitely use the effect to kind of up the gore levels a little bit more but honestly it does work and i feel like it does fit this movie it is the effects aren't necessarily like like over the top they don't try to over stuff in the movie with as many effects as possible this is a very much a grounded movie and they make full use of any practical effects that they possibly can the music was created by sarah shashna while it's not the most memorable theme it does add to the tension it is quite subtle and quiet a lot but it does have those dramatic elements and it does add to the horror elements as well it fits this movie, it never sounds out of place, it, it suits the tone that they've gone for as well as the setting, it really works. There aren't any like character themes or anything like that, I don't really think that the, the Predator himself really has a theme but as I said it does add to the tension, it does add to the horror, it really can build up the suspense quite a bit and I really do like how it is used in this film. Overall I think this is definitely one of the best movies in the Predator franchise, the best since the original at least in my opinion. This really does bring back a lot of the horror, a lot of the tension, I think the casting is great even though I think the characters could have been improved it a little bit more because like Predator basically just goes through people like it's absolutely nothing and you don't really care about the characters too much so I feel like they could have sort of built the characters up just a little bit more but outside of that I think that the characters that you do focus on like Naru I think they're good and I do like what it is that they do with them, especially the dog, I absolutely love him. The music, the editing, the effects, the cinematography, the setting, all of it is works so well for this film. It, everything is genuinely great, there's just a few gripes that I have with it, but honestly it is a really good film. I think if you are a fan of the Predator franchise, I think this is one that you do need to see. Make sure you at least try and give it a go whenever you can. Really would highly recommend it. If you're somebody who just likes an action movie, give it a go. If you're somebody who does like something that's a bit more horrifying, give it a go. I think this is a really great movie. So honestly, if you do want a good movie to watch, see this. So with all that being said, my rating for this movie is an 8 out of 10. This kind of does what like Top Gun Maverick did when it comes to like the original movies because this one does have like those little nuggets here and there where it kind of calls back and has like a few connections to the original films but it is very much its own thing it doesn't rely on nostalgia to get you to be like oh I, I like that because there are definitely a few things that do kind of connect to the original films but they're really not they're, really, they're only really in the background you don't really notice I didn't really sort of pick up on a lot of these things until somebody pointed them out but like, there's a couple little callbacks here and there there is one line that I sort of knew it was coming but I didn't really expect when it was that it was going to be included. So there are definitely elements in there but it isn't a nostalgia movie and it is very much its own thing. I do also have to say because this movie is only streaming on uh, Disney Plus and I think it's Hulu in uh, America. I'm actually quite disappointed by that because this is a big screen movie and I feel like this would have been a really great experience to have seen on the big screen. So. I'm really disappointed that it was just kind of like binned off from on the streaming services so if anyone from Disney is actually watching this I honestly think this is worthy of the big screen and I would love to see it be released in the way that it should have been released. And very quickly before I wrap up I do have to sort of say without spoiling it I'm sort of curious what it is that they're going to be doing with the franchise from this point on because there is definitely some sequel baiting in here but it's like it's not even like in the film it's like during the credit sequence which is kind of weird but that's really the only sort of hint that maybe there is going to be more to this franchise in the future which if it's anything like this will be really good and again I, hope, I really hope that it gets like a big screen release but I really don't know what it is that they're going to be doing from here I would like to see like a different setting maybe like they could change up each movie I think that could be a really good way of like keeping the franchise fresh as I said if it is as good as this movie then I'm more than happy that the franchise will continue in some shape or form well that's pretty much everything I've got to say for today's episode so thank you so much for watching please like please subscribe hit the notification buttons keep up to date on everything going on on this channel I'm also very 
available on Facebook, on RewindReviews.youtube where I share out little tidbits and things that I'm watching as well as the thumbnails I use for these videos. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about the movie, where would you rank it compared to the other Predator movies, what, what setting would you like to see a future Predator movie be set in. If you have any suggestions for any rewinds you want me to do a review for, uh, like maybe film, TV shows, games, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get around to them as soon as I can. Thank you once again for watching and I'll see you next time on Rewind Reviews. See you guys.